Hello and welcome to Final Boss Fight. My name is Jeff and once again I am the Keeper of Arcane Lore. And tonight we return to Horror on the Orient Express. I am joined by Brian Croy Dragon. Hello. By One Winged Angel Robin. Hello. By Sarah. Hi. And by Christy. Hello. And by Richard for, for some reason. Hello. Um. Richard, I believe you giving us the recap for this evening, so take it away. Oh yeah, I agree with you, didn't I? Uh so uh <laughs> we arrived in, in Venice um and we we met there was a woman who was very sad, which is a shame. It's very sad, sad shame when someone's sad. And it turned out she was having a a bunch of um marital slash fascist difficulties um uh in which she was involved or with a local fascist leader in venice uh when we arrived uh there was like a bunch of fascist goons knocking around um as well as um i believe it was a person like a nice person and not fascist who uh loved this woman uh, he was there as well uh trying to help her um and then there was a, there was basically a bit of a stare down with some fascists um we sort of backed up this nice young woman um if i remember right then we sort of uh trying to think no uh, we were exploring the city a bit as well we went to um a museum a, li a library it was a library that's, a, that's just a fancy word for a museum <laughs> it's a museum um, of books <laughs> Yeah, it's a museum of books. And we did some yeah. research and we found some things out. And we spoke uh, to some Italian people, as, as one does in Venice. Um, and then we, uh, I believe we tracked down uh, this woman's house. Mm -hmm. uh, and which we learned that um, her father had died. Yes. And uh, the funeral was going to be coming up very soon. And... Her father dying was very bad, obviously, just inherently, but also because 
he, you know, obviously would have been a protective figure in her life. And now he's gone. Um, you know, that's 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 bad for people. Um, I remember Maya was doing some stalking, like like she always does. Um, yep, following people around, not telling anyone where she's going. Um, and so we found out some information about uh, the French soldiers when they came into the city. Um, and the arm was it the arm? The left leg, leg. Right. left leg. Ah, yes. And we found like some journals of some of the French soldiers where they described it. Um, and uh, yeah, then we uh, met up again at this woman's house and had a chat with her. Uh, I believe Major Mercy suggested she uses the funeral as an opportunity to uh, run away because that's everyone would expect her to be there and it might be a good opportunity to get out of the area. I believe she refused. Um, there was talk of a decoy as well. A decoy, yes. Um, and I believe then we went back to the hotel we were staying in. Mm-hmm. And, and then, um, now this is obviously the most important Sorry. bit of the whole thing. Sorry? Sorry, I'm just talking oh. to Sarah. Oh, I thought I was being take... whispered information. No, no, I'm taking the dog out uh, to use the loo. <laughs> um, uh, Major Mercy heard something and went out to investigate. And because he's such a hero, um, he tried to help a young woman who has been attacked. And um, he realized uh, he recognized the attacker uh, from a painting that vanished in Paris. Is that right? Is that right? I think that's right, yep. Um, and it's that Count uh, Fenelik person is a thoroughly bad person. Uh, the woman escaped, so that was good. Um, he tried to do some weird stare down vampire stuff on Mercy, but that didn't work because Mercy's so tough. Um, so instead, he impaled him on a spike, I think I remember, on a railing spike. Um, and yeah, and then the party became aware of this and were very sad. <laughs> I think that's about right. So I'm going to move us to the Venice map. And it is the morning. Um, the morning of the 20... Just getting the calendar up. 29th. Monday the 29th of January 1923. Nancy, Edward and Roland, you are eating breakfast when you find this in a newspaper. And... The article is written in Italian, but you find a waiter to help translate it for you. And I'm going to ask um, Roland, would you please uh, read this out for us? Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Gruesome death in Venice. Tragedy or murder? A body was found this morning in the district of the Plaza San Marco. As- Asma Moriarty, 35, reported an attack by a shadowy figure in black. According to Senorita Moriarty, the assailant approached her before being distracted by the intervention of a British tourist. Senorita Moriarty felt the scene and sought out the nearest Plazarito, who attended the scene. The victim was discovered impaled on an iron railing 10 foot above the ground. His throat had been torn out as if it was a wild beast. In spite of the severe injuries, the victim's passport was found on his person identifying him as Major Sebastian Mercy of the British Governor's Foreign Office. The British Embassy in Rome has been notified an investigation is underway into the cause of the Major's death. The witness is currently being held in custody at the Plaza Zalokau. Yep. Sen- Senze San Marco for her own safety. 
while her statement's being taken and investigation is ongoing. Polizia. So a little bit about this. The Polizia Locale sets go in, a, um, in San Marco. It's a police, local police station. But that's what it currently is, so I don't know what it is back then, so I'm just using it. It may not be ac historically accurate, but um, it's the local police it's station local in police San Marco. State. So that's what we're going with. Um, so, yeah, on, on reading that, can I ask Edward, Nancy and Roland to please make me sanity rolls? Mm -hmm. And that was a 82. 82 for 96, that's a success. Mm -hmm. No, no. 19. Oh, that's not right. Where am I? Oh, 73 versus 90, that's a success. <laughs> and Roland? Uh, yep, yeah, mine's sent through. It looks like a success. Success. So, because this is Major Mercy, I kind of want this to mean something. So, for a success, it's a 1d3 sanity loss. So I'm offended that that's the, the least, you know. <laughs> so, uh, two points for me. Yep, lose two points of sanity, yep. How do you roll a d3? Um, just do a slash roll 1d3. Oh, you're going to be even more upset, Richard. I only lose one sanity. Uh, absolutely ridiculous. Oops, that's not what I meant to <laughs> Says unauthorised. Oh, yeah, sorry about my blowing my nose there. Christy, you should be able to... Um, there should be a dice roll. There you go. Three <laughs> points. There you go, three points. Well, at least, at least somebody cared to lose three points. <laughs> As you're reading this, processing it, Nancy, can you make me a, Nancy, can you make me a spot hidden roll, please? I can. As you're reading this, you three of you reading this, Nancy, you think you see something out of the corner of your eye, something skittering nearby bush. Not sure, you think it might have been a lizard or a chameleon? Maybe a chameleon. It's got that. It had that distinctive sort of head. Um. Can I get up and go and have a look? Yes, you can. Go to where you think it was, but whatever it was, it disappeared. Something about it seemed a bit familiar, though. Um. I go back and sit down at the table with the others. <laughs> How are Edward and Roland reacting to what you just read? Uh, Edward's a little bit shocked. Uh, he just slumps back in his seat and uh, stares into space. I would think Roland would probably be quite cut up. I mean, he's not... He, although he's a big, big guy and looks sort of tough and that, I mean, he's been through the wars and what have you, and that he's not afraid to sort of shed a tear <laughs> as a hanky. <laughs> you, Covered uh... in blood, because of course <laughs> it was used for butchering. <laughs> wow, okay. Um, you are interrupted <laughs> by Richard? Ah, yes. Um, a, a woman in her 20s um, approaches uh, your table um she uh, has oh i'm just gonna check my description that i put in <clears throat> she's definitely a woman <laughs> definitely young ish mrs sebastian mercy <laughs> oh, oh no uh, she i mean she's back home in england um you know he sent her an occasional letter uh but yes, uh, sort of uh, quite pretty, uh, sort of shortish brown hair, um, dressed very extravagantly in a sort of red gown, um, looks a bit tired, possibly a bit drunk, um, suspecting that she hasn't perhaps been asleep. And she'll just say, oh, my 
dear fellows, are, we, are you discussing the that horrific murder last night with the British soldier with a uh, transatlantic accent of the American style of the 1920s? If that did not come across, <laughs> I will. I'll just say something. This is out of character. I'm. I'm kind of glad I didn't change Roland because <laughs> that is. You, it's very, very similar to the character idea that I had, <laughs> <laughs> which was a yeah. So basically, my idea I was gonna swap to a basically like a sugar baby of an army officer. Oh, oh. um, who was sort of very, you know, sort of ditzy and that on the outside kind of thing, using using um puppy's money. To, to go travelling, so it's a good job I didn't swap. <laughs> that might have gotten along well. <laughs> I was going to say, but that would have been a lot of 20-year-old women then all together. <laughs> I did think I mean, yeah, basically it's just one then, isn't it? Yeah, it's changed yeah. the position of the party a fair bit. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, Nancy's going to look at this person and say, um, Yes, we were. Nancy is very stiff of a lip about this. So she's keeping it together. She's keeping a cool. Um, yes, he was a companion of ours. Oh, how terribly thrilling it must be to be involved in a murder case. I mean... Edward just does a side-eyed look to nowhere. <laughs> Um, yes, yes, of course, well, I understand. One take on it. Well, yes, there is also the, the, the grieving business, I suppose, but uh, one shouldn't dwell on such things. Thank you for your insight. I, I am very insightful, yes. Thank you. We're going to turn the camera away at a moment. You're going to turn the camera back to... Maya, now uh, Maya, you're at the location. I'm at the location of Maria Stagliani's house, where you've been spending the last couple of days and nights on watch, and it's been well. You've had a very rough night, I'm afraid. Um, this morning, your left shoulder is hurting, aching. Your chest is hurting quite a bit. It's like you've got heartburn, severe, severe heartburn, and from what you can see it looks like there's a lot more black shirts around you're you seen probably about two or three and watch on the house but there seems to be a lot more this morning and it looks like they're going around in pairs looking for something or someone actually looking for something or someone okay um <clears throat> where am i sorry um I've put, put your locator on the oh, map, your okay, uh, character okay. on the map, okay. yeah. Um, so immediately Maya is going to assume that they're looking for her. Okay. Or, um, what's his face? I've forgotten what he's called. Giorgio Gasparelli, the boyfriend. Mm -hmm. Um. Do I know which one... Uh, oh god, sorry, Jeff. Uh, I'm terrible with character names um, tonight. The character, you should see them all in the journal. The character names you know yeah. should be in the journal. And that's very well, but the, I've got a dog saying no, no, no. <laughs> uh, where are we? We're in Venice now, aren't we? Yep. Sorry, just. So, which, which character are you thinking of? Uh, the one I've been stalking out. Maria Stadliani is the person you've been yes. to her house, yeah. Um, do I know which one her uh, actual apartment is? You think yeah. yes, because you've been in there, inside it. Yeah. This is Maria. Um, <laughs> you know what? I want to try and sneak past all the black shirts, and I want to try and get in to knock on the door. Okay. Um... I'm gonna because there's so many of them around and they're a lot more alert and active this morning. I'm gonna have to ask you for a hard stealth roll. Uh, where's my character sheet gone? And that shouldn't be too bad because I think stealth's 
Yeah, stealth's 88, so... <laughs> oh, no! That's a regular success. I asked, I did ask for a hard success. Oh god, yeah, okay. In that case, um, do you want to try and push it somehow? Yeah, I'm gonna, like... The way I kind of see it is she'll, like, see that I kind of gotten it on and she'll quickly change direction. If that makes sense. That makes sense, yep, yep. That's a bit better. That's better, that's better. You managed to sneak past them. It's a, probably a bit of a close call in a couple of places, but you do manage to sneak past them. It's like, you know, you, you run past, you see two of them facing your way, you run past them, one of them like, immediately looks back to where you were but doesn't see you. Mm -hmm. So you managed to sneak past. Where are you going? Are you still going to the house? Yes, I was going to go to the house, just as it's somewhere a bit more kind of cover, and I can keep a closer eye. Okay. Why? Right, okay, so that's where you are for now. Um, going back to the Palace Hotel, what are the rest of the group doing? Oh, no, before I do that, before I do that, I'll stick with Nancy for a moment longer. Nancy, Maya. as your... Maya. Nancy, Maya. <laughs> I'm terrible with names. Um, Maya, as you're sneaking up to the house, you pass like a coffee shop and there's a newspaper outside. It's written in Italian, but you do see Major Sebastian Mercy's picture on the front cover on the front of the paper. Uh, en route past, I'm just gonna scoop it up. Okay. And continue on my way. Okay. Back to the Gritty Palace Hotel, what are the rest of our intrepid investigators going to do? Do we still have the service of the nice translatory bloke who was helping us in the library? Yes. So, Giovanni Benedetti, your friendly Italian speaking, Latin speaking student, um, is currently at the library. Uh, translating the Devil Simulare for you, the score you found. Cool. Well, Nancy's happy to let him get on with that, but she wants to go to the San Marco Basilica, mm -hmm. and specifically the Chapel of St. Isidoro. Okay. Going straight to look for that. under the See if there is a black paving stone. Okay, that's what Nancy's doing. What are Edward, Clara, and Roland doing this morning? Uh, well, Clara will ask, will just point like to see it to Nancy. Oh, are you going to investigate the murder? Um, I have some... if, if a friend of mine got murdered, I would investigate it. I'm happy to hear that. However, um, Mercy had great faith in the authorities. Um, we are going, I suppose, to a similar location, um, but I've got some other business to take care of. Oh. oh so are you two going to investigate the murder? Well, Ro Roland, was, well, I was thinking, I mean, I know the embassy is probably already looking into it, but maybe might be worth going to the British Embassy just to say, you know, we were travelling with him. Yes, uh, just to know what happened. Okay. Um, reading the... I would say that the best place to go then would be the police station in San Marco. Yeah. Was, yeah. So it's kind of the general direction that you're going in. So we'll say that. So we're saying that Nancy is going to the Basilica, the San Marco Basilica, location nine. Let's move your character there. Yeah. Edward, Clara, and Roland are going to the police station. I'll just move over here, which is kind of the right area. Uh, I'm gonna yes. I'm going to start with Edward, Clara, and Roland. You reach the Polizia Locale Sezione San Marco. And it's the sort of thing, I'm guessing that police stations across the world never really change. It's like a low squat two floor building. Um, there's, you see a couple of, will be boats outside, police 
mark boats the police markings. You go inside, there's a desk, there is a police officer at the desk with the you know, cap. Um, uh, he just looks up at you. See? Uh, before we go in, um, Clara, uh, I'm just going to, she's going to take out a mirror and just quickly check her appearance. Not so much for vanity, but because, you know, she was doing a lot last night and she wants to make sure if she's going to a police station, <laughs> she looks okay. <laughs> and, you know, we're getting too much bother. At which point she will also go, oh, yes, I don't believe we've actually done introductions. Uh, my name is Clara, and, and you two are? Uh, I'm Edward Beatty, and this is... And I'm Roland Billiot. Oh, it is an absolute pleasure to meet both of you. Um, I, I always think meeting friends in murder investigations is the best way to make friends. So we're here, we're here about what was his name? Captain Sad. No, Major Mercy. Major. Major Mercy. Yes, yes. Major Mercy. Major Mercy. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. You, as I say, you arrive. The desk sergeant or the desk officer looks up at you and just like he just looks at you and just rather briskly goes, "See, yes. What's what do you want?" <clears throat> uh, yes, we'd like to know what information you have on the murder of Major Sebastian Mercy. He was a companion of ours. Una momento, por favor. Moment, please. And he picks up a phone on the desk, and you hear him speaking in Italian, rapid Italian. And after a few moments, he looks at you. Uh, whom shall I say is asking? Uh, Edward Beatty. Uh, I was uh, going to suggest who has the highest rank out of <laughs> us all. I would guess Edward, may maybe then. Uh, Edward Beatty. I was on the the Carnarvon and Coward uh, uh, Carnarvon and Carter expedition in in twenty two. I see, uh, Senor Senor Eduardo Beatty. Uh, uh, Clara will put her hand out to the officer and just be like, uh, "Claro, is Claro, uh, Clara Meadowcroft Fairfax of the very famous Meadowcroft, uh, the very famous Fairfaxes, and very rich Fairfax." Clara, uh, Signorina Clara Meadowcroft Fairfax. Correct. Yes. Uh, C C. Put put in brackets. Very rich. <laughs> More rapid mm -hmm. Italian, and after where goes, um, uh, the uh, commissioner uh, would like to speak to you in person. Um, his office is uh, up those stairs, second door on the left. Merci, thank you. Prego. Well, that's all the languages being spoken today. It's Italian, <laughs> French, I think. It, it, it's all happening. She's very, she was very excited. Well, well, je suis en français. <laughs> I think I, 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 yes. I asked, I asked, <laughs> can you, <laughs> do you speak um, français rather than I am French? But that's rough. That's roughly what I know. <laughs> uh, I take it you. Uh, what's up? I was about to say, I take it you're walking upstairs in the direction indicated while you're, while you're having this conversation? Yeah. Uh, yeah. You arrive at the door, and the door says, Commissioner de, um, de Polizei. You knock on the door, and you hear a voice, um, Enter, please. You enter the room, and it's a very sparsely decorated room. Um, there's a, probably a couple of cabinets. There's an oak desk with some papers on it. And sitting behind the desk, looking very much like the cat that's got the canary, is the familiar face of Alberto Rossini. <sighs> is he wearing uh, the black shirt and whatnot? Yes. Yeah. Uh. 
Okay, good to know. And he says to you, smiling politely, uh, Forgive me my manners for the other day. Uh, welcome to the beautiful city of Venezia. How may the administrative government of Venezia assist you this day? Uh, yes, we'd like to inquire into the murder of Major Sebastian Mercy. Of course, of course. In fact, um, I'm happy to tell you, I know who did it, and I'm preparing to make an arrest. Indeed, and who was it? The none other than the internationally famous criminal, Maya Havdat. Hmm. Yeah, yes, I've heard she's bad, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 um, yes, that was quick work. Yes. And where did you actually find well, where she was? I will tell you what I know. This, this is what I know. Before this week, life in Venezia, she continues as normal as she has done for the past 100 years. <laughs> then, last Saturday, um, Five strangers arrive on the Orient Express from Milan, among them British diplomat Major Sebastian Mercy and the criminal Maya Havdat. I know that five rooms were booked at the Gritty Palace Hotel, but only four have been slept in. I know that Maya Havdat has been seen skulking around some of the alleyways late at night. That is what I know. Now, what I believe happened is that. Maya Havdat had coerced by Major Mercy into whatever business, and she was looking for a way to escape his grasp, afraid that it might ultimately lead to her imprisonment. And so, when she saw Major Mercy having a late night walk, she took her chance, and, well, we know what happened. Unless you think that of anything different? I'm just nobody speak just yet. I'm trying to think of a way to <laughs> call his bluff. <laughs> I'm just trying to think of something that can say that maybe that because at the moment we're in a state of he said that he knows that five individuals brought rooms and that he he might still be unaware that at the very least that we're not involved and the bonus is at the minute clara is definitely not involved <laughs> so that's our sort of pawn at the minute that we can use there is another um, there is another hint that you that you have yeah Think about where the body was found where exactly was the body found? Uh, ex excuse me, uh, fascist police officer. Um, <laughs> is is my, I have already heard of her reputation. Um, is Maya have that six, seven feet, eight feet tall and extremely strong? Uh, no, see, uh, Maya is. Um, I understand she is of average height, of average strength, very, um, very dexterous, very, very flexible, very. Able on her feet, but uh -huh. strong, tall, no. Aha! Uh -huh. I put it to you, fascist police officer, <laughs> that um, such a woman would struggle to manhandle, uh, I believe, a decorated soldier, um, you know, onto onto high iron railings. How how would how would how would such a woman accomplish that? I agree. There are some points in the case that. Do need clarifying, but I have no doubt that when we find Maya have that we shall be able to get the story straight, as it were. Or do you have any further information that may be of assistance? Well, well, I've seen a lot of suspicious characters in the town. I'll, I will tell you that a lot of suspicious characters. Yes, Viol violent as well and stupid. <laughs> Make me ooh, your choice of persuade or fast talk. Uh, uh, 
I will go for why can't I open this sheet more? I'll go for fast talk. Okay. Yeah, that's how that works. Oh, that's 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 right. <laughs> I mean, at this point, you might just spit on the floor and say, "Like, uh, <laughs> I, I did learn this um, from from Archer, Caso uh, uh, Fascista," which is, I believe, quite an insult to a fascist. Uh, he he's not the but um, as it is, he can't arrest you. Well, he could arrest you for um, have for for insulting him, but um, he's yeah. not going to. He's well, he'd still... be very he'd be very busy, presumably, if he did yeah, that. Very... Yes, because that that'd be all day just arresting everybody. And what about Edward or Roland? What have you, have you anything to add to this conversation? Uh, no, Edward's just glaring at Rossini like he's. He's not actually seeing Rossini. He's seeing the the cop that assaulted his sister back in Canada. Hmm. Like he really doesn't trust this guy. He's uh, it doesn't matter where you go. A corrupt cop's a corrupt cop. Hmm. And Roland. Um. Not the minute, but I'm wary that now we've sort of let off that we're asking that he knows that we're the other ones that have travelled. He would have known anyway. Him, he, did check your pass he did check all your passports. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah. what I'll say is, it's like this tense standoff where nobody's saying anything. It's like lots of eyes you know, glaring at each other. Probably goes on for a couple of minutes. You can feel like the tension rising. Then he sits back in his seat. I am a um, a just and fair man. I would I'll tell you what I do. I will make you a deal. I am willing to call off my pursuit of um, the criminal Maya Hafdat. I will allow you to question the witness to the attack. I will even allow you to go about your business in Venice unhindered, unmolested by myself or my agents. In return. I ask two conditions. First of all, the moment your business in Venice is concluded, you leave the city by the first available Orient Express train. Mm -hmm. The second condition is that you and your companions cease all interference in the matter of the marriage between myself and Marilia Stadlioni. And Clara's going to sort of stage whisper, are you interfering with a marriage? Because <laughs> <laughs> that sounds quite <laughs> fun. Is it his marriage? Because, like, he's a... I, I don't like him. <laughs> oh, of course, we wouldn't do that. I mean, <laughs> after all, you aren't married yet. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have a deal? Well, this is this is my thought. If we say that we have a deal, we're not the ones that are technically messing with the marriage, are we? <laughs> I mean, us three personally. So we can make the deal and say yes, but that doesn't stop um, <laughs> I like the others it. helping out with the marriage. Mm -hmm. I like it. Uh, yes, I, I of mean, course. I, mean, I, I don't know who any of these people are. So. <laughs> uh, no. Yeah. Yes, we we will do nothing. We we agree. We we will just say we agree. <laughs> don't say we three. We agree. Yes, yes uh, fascist police officer. I, I I should point out at this point that I am not really connected to this group, and I may stay in Venice. Purely to annoy you at this point. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you you are trying to go for a one way trip to the cells. He has got his eye on you. <laughs> that uh, yeah, well, he can he can do what he wishes in fascist Italy, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> 
But what you say seems to satisfy him. Goes very well. We have a deal. I will be watching you. Um, you you may go downstairs and tell the desk sergeant that um, you may question the witness. And with that, he turns back to his writing. Uh, don't let me keep you. Uh, as as we leave, Clara's going to do the um, back at him. The I'm watching you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, while they're leaving, Edward just says, I hope we don't end up searching the sewer. I don't want to see more like him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. As you leave the office, we're going to turn back for a moment to um, Nancy, who is investigating the San Marco Basilica. And it's a very, well, I say touristy. There's a lot of um, people looking around it. You enter. It's this large cavernous space. You look up. You can see the domed roofs on the inside, inlaid with gold, inlaid with mosaic and pictures of the Lord Jesus and all the apostles, various biblical scenes. The so focal point is a... It's like a structure, four-poster structure, where the tomb of St. Mark is. Oh, good. <laughs> um, there are chapels. A typical Italian um, church has like chapels lining the sides, so mm -hmm. chapels to various people. Can I have a look and see if I can find the chapel of Saint Isidoro? Which is looking like Amatorus, so I'm sort of just sort of mm. yeah, trying it to be inconspicuous. Um. It takes you probably about half an hour because there's quite a lot of things to see in here and manoeuvring around all the tourists, but you do find a tiny, very dark recess, um, almost, you know, with like a stone cos ca um, casket in it, with two mm -hmm. little bronze winged lions on either side, and there is a, su there is a chiseled sign, engraved sign, uh, San Isidoro. Is there... A black paving stone. <laughs> um, I'm going to say yes. I'm not going to make you roll for this because you built you take your time and find it. Yes, there is a dark paving stone on the floor. Well, it's like a it's like a checkerboard pattern on the floor. Black and white okay. paving stones. Um, but you see one that is where the mortar is darker and a poorer quality than the rest. Almost as if it was done, it's been like, moved at some point. Not recently, but moved at some Okay. And how busy does it seem? Are there lots of officials? Are there lots of tourists? Are there lots of sort of people around this chapel? Um... I'll ask you for a luck roll, please. Come on, come on, come on. 36 against 59. It's a success. Very nice. It looks like, at the moment, you can hear, like, groups of tourists, groups of people, but they seem... At the other end of the basilica from where you are for the moment, you appear to be alone where you are. Um, I'm going to have a look at this poor quality um, grout and see if it'll start to unpick or if the stone will move at all. The mortar crumbles as you touch it. However, the stone paving stone is very heavy okay you're gonna uh, you're gonna need help basically yeah should have bought oh, this would have been a good job for Roland really um cool is there any information about sort of when the chapels open the chapel closes or the basilica is open the basilica or well, the, the basilica 
closes at dusk, so probably be about 7.30, 8 o'clock in the evening. That's, okay. when, that's when the doors are locked. Is there any sort of side exits, anything that would look like they would be a good way of getting into it nearer this particular trap wall compared to coming in the front entrance? Uh, I will ask you for a spot hidden roll this time, actually. Very close, 82 against 83. Again, it probably takes you searching, probably inside and outside. Mm -hmm. But there's a section of this pl of the plaza where it like curves around as if it's going into another street. Um, mm -hmm. But you can you think you can see a side door there, which appears to be locked. What? sort of lock does it look? Does it look like one that potentially if I had a master criminal <laughs> and thief they might be able to unpick it? Oh yes, most definitely. Cool. In that case I should have done this before I left the chapel when I was still having a look around. Did anything feel weird? Was there anything odd? Like when we found the arm in the basement in the French one, there was that weird plant thing growing. Um, I mean, I'm not necessarily saying plants. Anything that just seems like it doesn't make sense. Anything that seems weird and awful. Sense of foreboding. Sense of oncoming doom. Now that you mention it, no, uh, no, you didn't. Oh, no. Cool. Well, having scoped out the building, I'm going to go and try and find Maya. Okay. What is Maya? As the um, morning has gone on, you've noticed the extra black shirt presence start to melt away a bit. In fact, it like. Mm -hmm. There's only probably like one or two left. Mm -hmm. What would you um, like to do? <clears throat> so, uh, my initial plan had been to kind of hide out in... Um, sorry. Uh, Miss Stagliani's uh, apartment, if I could, like knock on the door, and I was going to ask her to translate the paper for me. Okay. Um, she opens the door and it looks like she's been crying a bit. Um, she, oh, uh, Signorina, have that. Um, uh, what are you doing here? Just wanted to check in, to be honest. Um, uh, I know you say that Mr. Uh, Rossini's not planning to do anything before the till after the, your father's funeral, but I know how the criminal mind works, and I don't trust him. So I wanted to just check in. You, have you, you, not, you, have have you not heard? Checking. Have you not heard? Have you not seen the papers? Have you not heard? I saw a paper, and she pulls out the paper she grabbed <laughs> on the way, um, but I don't speak Italian. You don't know. Your friend, Major Mercy, he's dead. And you see the colour just drain from Maya's face. And without kind of being invited in, she just walks in and collapses on the sofa. And um, Maria will explain to you, translate the article on the paper, it's the same article that we had Roland read out mm -hmm. at the start. Um, actually, can you make me? I think you would have read this before. Can you make me an idea roll, please, Maya? That's just intelligence, isn't it? That's just intelligence, yes. Uh, that is a success of 61 out of 65. That's enough. As you hear Maria describe how made found on a high 10 foot iron stake 
iron iron railing with his throat ripped out. Something about that seems familiar to you. Someone about it seems familiar to me. Yes. Not so much the iron stake, but a body being found in a high place. Oh, God. Um, I'm trying to think where I've heard that before. Um, it's in the Milan handouts, Milanese Man Murdered. Hang on, just give me a second. Oh. Yeah, I'm on Discord. Right. Uh, oh, that's stuff as an arms dealer. That's why the little thingy was familiar. Mm, the chameleon. Yeah. Uh, I have found the article if you would like me to read it out. Yeah, no, I found no, it. Myself. Take... All right. <laughs> uh, He had his throat ripped out in a bestial slain, did you say? Yes, and his body was found on top of a ten foot high iron railing. Um I'm so did we take that article with us or not? I can't remember. Or did we just read it? What I said was that and it would have been in the papers in the um I think the papers would have reached Venice on the first morning you were here. So I mm. did I did show it again. Yeah. This is disturbing. Um, I know me and the Major did not always see eye to eye, but his skills were invaluable. Um, he shall be missed. This Brother, way he you... was... I'm sorry, let sorry? You so I'll, let you, I'll let you carry on, sorry. Um, this way he was killed, it seems very similar to an incident that happened recently in Milan. Do you know anything about that? I only... I remember reading an article a couple of days ago, um... One have been found on the roof of a cathedral. Some um, mm -hmm. they wouldn't describe the injuries. Um. Yes, and you're saying Mercy was found up a height as well. An iron railing, ten foot high. Nobody could, nobody could sling a body up there, throw a body up there. Mm. Like no one could get a body on the top of a cathedral, eh? Yeah. I'm afraid. What about your companions? Are they okay? I... If I'm going to be honest, I don't know. Um, I've been keeping an eye on your protection. Thank you, but um, it's really not necessary. I was going to say, you you know the plan we discussed. First sign of trouble, even if it's beforehand. I suggest you get out of Venice. I will. I will think about what you said, especially with the deranged killer on the loose. That puts a different um, look, face mm. on things. I'm sorry, I don't know the word. There is um. A lot of strange goings on at the minute. Um, thank you for, at the very least, letting me come in and warm up a bit. It's, uh, it's no brother. <coughs> no brother at all. <coughs> are, you, are you okay? <clears throat> I've not been feeling great the last couple of days, to be honest. My arm's been sore. I've been feeling a bit of a cough coming on. Oh. Be be careful. The uh the winters round here can be somewhat unforgiving. Mm. Um well 
I suppose I should probably try and rejoin my companions, but as I say, first sign of trouble, you get out of here. I will. I will. I will. I will think about what you said. I. I will do so. And keep the door locked. <laughs> Obvious, all times. Yes. And you can reach us at this address if you need us. <laughs> Thank you. you. You're very. You and your friends are very kind. I'm, so, I'm and sorry. And with that, going to try and. Sneak out again past all the black shirts and head back to where she knows the party are staying. As I said, the um, black shirts are only like one or two around, and it's. You can, you Maya's quite been extra careful, though. <laughs> I'm not gonna make. I'm not gonna make you roll for it, so you can quite. I was gonna get say just. Yeah. She knows how the criminal mind works, and she yes. knows <laughs> yes. something's going on. She doesn't know what, but guilty conscience and all that conscience and all that. We're going to go back to, I think it's probably going to be approaching probably midday now, and we're going to go back to Edward, Roland and Clara at the police station. Um, what are your plans now? So we're going to, we're going to speak to the, we're going to speak to the witness, aren't we? Who saw the, the terrible murder. Yes, that's what I was going to say. Okay. Yeah. So you go back downstairs to the desk officer. Uh, C, uh, do you require anything else? Is there anything else you require? No. Slam my face, my, my face, my hand down <laughs> the desk. Um, that, that's quite a different image. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> and she's going to say, uh, your boss uh, said we should speak to the witness in the Mercy murder. Oh, Signorina Moretti. Um, are, are you sure? He, he looks a bit concerned, worried at this. That is what the top fascist cop upstairs said. <coughs> Chief fascist, you know. Um, why would we not want to speak to her? Uh, okay, if that is what you wish. Um, please, please follow me. And he comes around from behind the desk and leads you to a doorway and it stairs downstairs, going to a lower floor, basement floor, where there's cells lining each side and you can hear a loud and violent banging coming from one of the cells towards the end. And they're screaming in Italian as well. Do either of you speak Italian? Unfortunately, I'm French, but I suppose it wouldn't hurt to try to translate. I don't think Roland does know any other languages. Hmm. All right. Uh, hold on for a moment. Uh, I can't remember what other languages I've had selected for Edward. Um, oh, uh, I speak English, French, Russian, and Arabic. Well, it's but no job. Italian. It's a good job you've got a police, an Italian police officer with you then leading you. <laughs> um, but he se he seems somewhat reluctant to get any closer. Uh, Senor, Senores, sen, uh, he's she's been she's been shouting ever since she got here, shouting about Il Diablo, the devil, saying she said she had seen Satan. She said that Satan came down and tore, made tore that body apart. She said something about it was trying to drink his blood. Just com mad ravings of a mad person. Sounds exactly we... like Maya have doubt that description. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, would we know of any of the, the things mm. that we've been looking for? 
off the top of our head. Not, you know, anything not. that that sort of does does this to. <laughs> nothing. I don't say there's anything that you, nothing that you directly encountered. You would have, you would, you would recognise as this. All the, to um. Actually, make me an idea roll, please, Roland. But make me an intelligence roll. Intelligence uh, roll. Sorry, that sigh wasn't like, oh, I've got to make an intelligence roll. It's the the page wouldn't load. <laughs> it takes you a while, but um, it sounds, from the description of what the what the officer is saying, it sounds like something you heard or read a long time. Well, it seems a long time ago. It's only probably about a couple of weeks a week a couple of weeks ago, maybe, from the asylum in Paris. Um, mm. there was a patient there who seemed to be raving um, talking of things that talking of things that didn't make sense and uh, it's been a while so I can't exactly remember what you did or didn't yeah, do there no. um, yeah but I think it, it, no, would, it would remind you of something from Paris I think the time Maya almost went into the asylum. Mm. <laughs> yep. Fond memories. And as you approach, you see that you see you know, the um, officer opens the window and you see inside inside this poor woman, like you know, hair dishevelled, like thrashing around violently, and it looks like she's she's got blood pouring down her. From her eye socket, it's almost like try to gouge out her eyes. Yeah. Not in a state for, um, not in a state for talking. Sadly. Have you, have no, you gotten a not. doctor for this woman? Uh, we are try. We we have asked for a doctor, but um, the doctors around here seem to be busy. It seems that people have um been having problems in the winter with their. With their left legs, some spate of some spate of problems with left legs appears to have um, come up in the city. I don't know what it is, but um, doctors being kept quite busy. This is yep. off topic ever so slightly, but um, help in the future if it is related. But there is a statue somewhere. It might very well be in Italy, which actually cries blood. Like it's something to do with the stone, like it actually weeps from the I have heard of this, yeah. It's not like actual blood, but it's yeah. like red red coming out of the eyes. Yeah. That's a bit creepy. <laughs> In real life. A little it's bit. like yeah, it's <laughs> like it's a statue. As well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've heard that as, I've think I've heard of that as well. Something to do with iron uh, not iron, copper yeah. or oxide in it. Mm. Yeah, the oxide in it. Anyway, but never know, it might help in the future if it's coming from her eyes. <laughs> And it seems like there is nothing you can get from this poor woman. Hmm? Nothing. No. So, I mean, if she's. Surely, if she's insane. Like. Well, I don't want to say insane, but unwell. She's surely unfit to have seen what had happened. So. Surely it, it can't be. You know, be taken what she's seen. Oh, it's the ravings. She's mad. It's the ravings of a mad person. Yeah, that's what I mean. Surely that wouldn't hold up in court if. You know, because she's not sane of mind. So whatever she says anyway. I think the police officer is probably going to lead you back up from the cells and out of the police station at this point. And so, uh, Sergeant, I, I, 
Are, are you a fascist as well? <laughs> I am simply trying to keep the peace in this city, Signore. Um, I tr don't try not to have any leanings either way. Ah. But so, they are hmm? in charge, and so they they are the they are the right the lawful government of this country, the city. So um, ultimately they ultimately I must do as as they wish. But um, I just I just want to do my job and go home to my family. Hmm. And the these these past few days um. I don't mind telling you, Senor, Senor, Senora. I'm worried. I'm concerned, Senorina. With everyone's left leg hurting. Well, I seem to have avoided it so far, but um, I think my three-year-old this morning was complaining was about really some pins and needles or something in her left foot. Um, has there been any night news or anything of? Any statues or like artifacts and that delivered to the city? Uh, not, not recently. Um, that the, this there are a lot of statues in Venice. Um, we cannot keep track of all of them. But none of them been damaged at all. Uh, not that I've heard of or I'm aware of. Um, certainly no, certainly nothing related to any misdemeanors or crimes. I'm I know, I was trying to work off the basis that, obviously, mm. if everybody's left leg is hurting, then mm. it's obviously a piece that we're looking for. At about this time, if you're returning to this square, through the square, you'll meet up with Nancy, and probably at the same time, Maya rejoins the party. So you're all back together again. Uh, Clara's going to hug Nancy in a very sort of uh, over-enthusiastic hug. Nancy is not okay with this. Well, <laughs> it's happened. Uh, Nancy will have stood there <laughs> stiff as a board, looking massively uncomfortable. Hello, we met before. Yes, yes, I didn't... I don't know if I actually got your name before uh nancy sutherland and you are uh clara meadowcroft fairfax a pleasure to meet you mm, that most people agree yes that it is uh-huh nancy uh-huh be an idea roll please am i gonna think that she's maybe related to Someone historically. Commander Fairfax from the English Civil War. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, I am. <laughs> Where's my ideas? Oh, it's at the top, isn't it? Intelligence, yeah. And all I can think of is the weekend we watched the film, um, The Lost I City. think I know where this idea rule's going. Uh, oh, well, it was a big failure, so I'm not going to have an idea. Uh, doesn't quite... Do you want to make the roll, uh, Maya? I wouldn't say... Everyone's obviously noticing Maya looking a bit gloomy as well hmm. when she returns. Go on that's then. a 40. Go on and Robin. Oh, Go on then, Maya. That's, that's a pass. That's a pass. You wouldn't happen to be related to uh, Amelia um, Meadows. Meadow, sorry. Meadowcroft. Meadowcroft, would you? Uh, yeah, yes, she, she, she was my mother. Ah. Did she ever tell you her stories of her adventures? Uh, she told me, she told me many things. Did she tell you ones about a certain type of hat? <laughs> this is, that uh... was, some might say was blood red. Getting very esoteric. Um, um, she, she had a lot of uh, fanciful stories. Mm, we read about her recently. Oh, did you? Mm-hmm. And you are? 
Mm. Oh, do you not recognize me? <laughs> the old fancy pants. You, you don't look well. <laughs> <laughs> There's a wry chuckle at this, uh, and she's like, well, it's probably a good thing you don't know me. Um, it's Maya have that. Oh, the, the thief, yes. Do you know yes. you're wanted for murder? <laughs> you what? At the police station, I believe you were one of the key suspects in the murder of, of uh, Major Mercy. Mm. And um, the chief fascist, as Clara likes to put it, mm. um, definitely knows that we're all all together. Um, Nancy's going to look at Maya and say, had you heard the news about Mercy? Yes, just however long it's been since I was at uh, Stagliani's place. Um, as I say, I know me and the Major had our differences, but murder? <laughs> I'm a thief. I'm not a killer. Well, this police, this uh, head fascist, you know, ugh, makes me want to reconsider my options. <laughs> well, he, he, I believe he, he made a deal with your uh, your friends here to drop the matter, which would suggest he's not terribly convinced of your guilt. Uh, now, let me explain. We agreed, so me and Edward here agreed. We said we, the key, the key thing. So me and him have agreed. You, you two haven't. So therefore, in theory, you have not made the agreement with him so you can carry on. Carry on with what? Interfering in his coming marriage. Mm hmm. And you can see the kind of cogs in Maya's head just starting <laughs> to turn. <laughs> mm -hmm. Who wants to cause some mischief at some point? I mean, it seems to follow you round, Maya. It's my middle name, didn't you know? I did not. In the meantime, that subject that we have been researching, I think I may have found something relevant. Go on. I'm unsure if we should be talking in public and sort of just sort of like a side eyes, a not very subtle glance because mm. Nancy's not great at that at Clara. Well, I, I know she's a thief, but I think you know her quite well. So, she, that... she thinks she's talking about Maya. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. um, yes. Ah, uh, yes. <sighs> hmm, we seem to have got a little follower, haven't we? Do you want me to take care of her? <laughs> I mean, I don't know why she's here still, to be honest. Hmm. Well. Can, can, I, can I hear all this? Is this... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but let's be fair. Clara has not exactly been subtle and didn't seem to realise that we were talking about her before. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I, I mean, uh, first of all, take care, take care of her. Um, you know, I, I know people in the Mafia. That's a sinister phrase. Uh, <laughs> se second of all, uh, adventure is, is what I'm here for. Um, interesting escapades. Hmm. Of course. Do you have any particular skills? Yes. Yes, many. 
I, I, I can speak Mandarin. And that is indeed a skill. It is. If, if I had a CV, it would be on it. But you did also say you had a lot of money. My father has a lot of money. How? Oh. Could you contact him? No. I mean, I, I could, as in, I, I imagine I could get a, a message to him of some kind, but uh, no. Annoyingly, the, the Fairfax name seems to carry less weight in Europe than it does in America. I'm from Kent. Oh, you are from? Yes, just America. Uh, Newport, to be exact. Well. If adventure is what you are seeking, we are looking for an item that I believe may be buried in... Get my note out again. The San Marco Basilica. Oh, we're going to steal something from a church. Potentially, but it does not rightly belong in the church, if that is of concern to you. Uh, no, I, I, I believe my family is Episcopalian. Um, um, not Catholic, so. Maybe this could be a good trial run. I've, uh, yeah, I've, I think it would be a good way for you to demonstrate, all of you, your usefulness. Yeah, I think it would be a good trial. Maya just cocks an eyebrow. <laughs> My dear, you're misunderstood. We are quite an established group. You are an outsider. <laughs> Indeed I am. <laughs> I think that puts me in good position to judge all of you. You're a very ill-tempered group. I know you're grieving, but, you know. We have come into contact with some interesting characters. Believe us, we have reasons to be wary. Yeah. Especially of nobility. Uh, uh, I'm American. Uh, we, you know, we kick nobles out, you know? That's our whole thing. Yes, anyway. Shall we make a move? I'm going to say that the sun is starting to go down at about this time. Okay. Um, shall we head back to the hotel? Get to know our new friend a little bit better. Mm -hmm. And also, I have some reading material for you about your mother you might find very interesting. There is indeed a lot that has been written about her. Not quite like this one. Well, um, she will put out her arm for Nancy to like, as if she'd like to take it to to promenade down these streets of Venice. Uh, Nancy will take it, but she looks so uncomfortable. Mm. So uncomfortable. So, just to recap, you're heading back to the hotel. Maya's keeping an eye out for any black shirts that are following them, especially after she's been accused of being a prime suspect in a murder case. Okay. I will say that you do see, well, you see black shirts, a few black shirts around, a few police officers around, but none of them appear to be taking any interest in you. Mm. Back at the hotel, 
My, this is the first time you've actually been to the hotel, isn't it? It is, <laughs> yes. You get the you get your keys from reception. You go to your rooms. Maya, you open your room, and it looks like there's somebody in your bed. Amazing. I'm gonna just go in and pull the covers off. You pull the covers off, and what you see on the bed is the torso and the left arm of the simulacrum arranged like a body. Alright, who the hell's been in my room? The oh. maid? <laughs> and she's looking immediately at everyone else. <laughs> We know we keep this hidden, not out in the open. Well, we've been out all day. We've just met you in the lobby, when would we have had time to have... You can see Maya just... I twitching a little bit. She is not a happy bunny. <laughs> uh, Edward is just... He's... Staring into space, you know, you can see like cogs turning into his head as he starts to realize. I think the police are keeping an eye on us. Yes. Why, why do you have a mannequin in your bed? Not judging. <laughs> it shouldn't be in the bed. Well, well, yes, I agree. I did not put it there last I saw it. We had it secure. Well, I'm, I'm going to check my room and see if, if I've been left torsos. And, uh, <laughs> she goes off to her room. <laughs> Do you generally carry one with you? No, 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 no. Maya's going to shut the door and lock it behind her. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, Clara, you go to your room, and your room is fresh and clean. Um, room service has been here today. Hmm. I will I, uh, At this point, I will change from the sort of gown into sort of uh, trousers, a shirt, uh, the waistcoat tie, sort of boots. Like the sort of more um, practical hmm. stuff that Clara wears, and then uh, we'll also find her uh, revolver and discreetly, um, you know, uh, put that on her person, and then uh, return to the group. Find the doors locked, which is annoying. <laughs> <laughs> it's just going to knock at it. I'm going to kind of go to the peephole. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to be just like, really trust an outsider with this. Just looking at everyone in the group while she's saying that. Well, shall we see how she is able to help? With this, we don't need to tell her what it is. Agreed. Roland, Edward, do you have any thoughts? Well, I mean, considering some of the things that have happened to us, I don't know if she'd last very long anyway. <laughs> her sanity. <laughs> depending on what happens next. <laughs> the, the door handle rattles. Let's try to turn it. Or we could just tell her that we're treasure hunters. Mm -hmm. Well, in my case, that's the truth. I mean, right. it is the truth, really, for all, for all of us. We could we're just tell her, <laughs> we could just tell her the truth about everything that's happened, as strange as it sounds. 
a, a piece of paper is slid under the door. <laughs> uh, it just says, I'm outside. I don't know if you've heard me knocking. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Maya's going to get the book uh, that's the story of the Red Fez. Oh, the diary, yeah. Yeah. And she's going to open the door with the chain on. <laughs> and she's going to say, read that. Come back to us after you've read that. It'll be enlightening. So now we're going to play through the 1893 scenario again. No yeah, we're all, we're <laughs> and then I'm going to shut the door. <laughs> See us all in several months. <laughs> She's going to start reading it out loud out in the corridor. <laughs> and you, Richard, you, you, you remember, I'm sure you remember the story of what happened, so we don't, we don't yeah. need to go over that again, really. <laughs> Although... But she, she's got a good voice, very eloquent. When you come to the end of it, it does offer an answer to one question you've always had. Why did your mother have that blood wine red birthmark down her face? Oh. Mm. Does answer that. That's not what she told me. <laughs> well, if you believe it, of course. Mm, I mean, she has like a Her mother told a lot of stories, some of which were not true or, you know, greatly exaggerated. Uh, others, and others were true, like just normal stories for, you know, for her life. And then some were a bit supernatural. And certainly the stuff around like Constantinople um, and some of that stuff seemed to really sort of shock her mother. And it was rare to see her mother like take something really seriously. So she's always been a bit. There must be something must have happened. Yes, she she told me uh, she got punched in the face uh, by the king of Prussia. <laughs> I mean. It didn't. It didn't seem likely because, as as we all know, Prussia did not exist as an independent nation at that time. Um, but you know, it's what you said. she sounds a character. Your mother. I would say after the story has been read, Maya would let her back in. <laughs> We're not having this conversation out in the corridor or between a door. Well, she's been reading out loud outside. <laughs> Yeah, that's how Maya knows she got to the end. Yeah. She's doing she's been doing voices and you know for the whole production. <laughs> Probably getting some odd looks from other hotel guests. Mm. <laughs> so she comes back in and she goes, My mother had mentioned some of this to me. Never quite sure how much one could believe her, but she did enjoy a tall tale. Uh, well, we are on a very similar quest. And that is just kind of a small taster of what you're stepping into if you do decide to keep following us. Well, I've had a, a very eventful life in my 25 years, and this would seem uh, an interesting next step. Very well. While Clara's been reading it, can I have talked to the rest of the party about what I've found? And By all means, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so are we... You said there was a door you needed to get through. Mm -hmm. Right. Should we go investigate that then? What time is it now, Kiba? Probably about 
<laughs> Actually, no. If Clive's been reading that whole thing, it'd probably be about eight o'clock. So after it's been closed, we could look like we are going out for yeah. an, an evening, evening stroll. stroll. Mm. But I suggest we be careful if there's some feral beastie about. <clears throat> we don't want to end up like my dear friend. Okay. There aren't as many people out this news of the murder obviously people want to try and stay indoors as much as possible there are those few still out who don't you know who don't believe in like superstitious nonsense like what was re like what's been said but um yeah it's supposed to quite it's quite quiet actually they not even that much in terms of police or black shirts around you cross the the square um, you cross the square to the side door that um, Nancy found earlier on, and it's locked with a, a iron, simple iron lock. And I'm going to kind of say, right, ev everyone, keep watch. Make sure there's no one coming. I'm going to uh, get to work. Okay, make me. Please, Maya. Oh God! Um, this, this is just going to be time more than anything else. So I'll just say that it's more than you're expecting. Mm -hmm. like it's still it's still successful, but it's just like takes you a bit longer, and presumably you're a bit shaken. You know, your arm is hurting, and it takes you a bit longer than you'd have thought. Mm -hmm. But eventually, the door does. Probably everybody else is like getting a bit antsy, but um, the door does open, and inside is dark. Did anyone bring some light? Got dark vision. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong game. <laughs> Oi, newbie. Did you bring anything to light the way? Let's get inside first of all. Um, I, I smoke, <laughs> so I have I have some matches. Those will do. <laughs> oh, that just adds to the creepiness. It's great. Sorry? That just adds to the creepiness factor. This that's great. <laughs> it's I do like inside it's um, it Nancy, you were here earlier on, but it seems a lot bigger, dark, a lot more where there was noise before, background noise of people here it's just dead silence. You can hear your footsteps across the floor. And then see you lead them to the chapel of San Isidoro. Is there any handy candles we can nick on the way? Yeah, grab it. Yeah, there's a couple of like candles you can grab. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, we'll do that. So I go and take them there. Does it look how it did earlier in the day? Does it look like anyone else has been tampering? Has the grout magically refilled itself? It's exactly as you left it. So everything is um, exactly as you left it earlier in the day. And just double checking, there's not anyone about that we can see, not a guard or anything. You spend some time, you spend some time peering in the darkness, you spend some time straining your ears, you don't hear anything, nothing to hear. Cool, well, Nancy's going to sort of say she's standing guard and say, gentlemen. Maya, Clara, Nancy. <laughs> yes, she, Nancy's already tried to move it. She can't, so she brought her muscle back. <laughs> yep, yeah, I suspect Roland can give it a go. It will require me two people to move it. So what I'll do is, if Roland, you're taking the lead on it, make me a strength roll with a bonus die because you'll have somebody else, like say Edward, presumably helping you. So make me a strength roll. Roll it. Roll it twice, basically. Never. Um, hard success. We'll take that. Between you and Edward, you managed to lever. You managed to lever it, and strangely enough, it doesn't feel like stone when you lever it up. It feels like some sort of metal. 
black black metal like the light just to it mm. underneath the stone is a cavity probably about three foot long probably like bent in the middle and the shape of a leg but it's empty oh, i knew it thick dust coats the surface where, yeah. showing where the leg had been Lighter dust coats the place where the leg lay. It looks like it's been missing for years rather than for decades. And in the center of the cavity, there is a small yellowing envelope sealed with wax. Sealed with what now? Sealed with a wax seal. Would we recognize who the wax seals by? can describe to you the wax seal you may not recognize it you won't recognize it yourself but i'll describe it to you it shows a winged cherub set against a shield and the cherub cradles a doll it's not one you're familiar with the if you open the envelope the letter is written in italian Hmm. Do we any take it to a translator? Italian? No. Can I have a bash at reading it? Because I speak Latin. Oh yes, make me a Latin, make me a hard Latin roll, please. Absolutely not going to pass this. It's worth a shot. It's always worth a shot. Languages. Languages. Oh, I thought I did speak Latin. I made that up. I just uh, thought I should. Uh, do, you, do you speak Laura Mipsum? <laughs> <laughs> we do know someone who does speak. Yeah, we do. I was really certain I had that. Um, okay, in that case, um, yeah, we take the letter, putting things back as they were. Yeah. Should should we leave a letter? Oh, you know, a call. And Say call. that we've taken a letter. Well, I I don't know. It seems it, it seems a done thing. I think we take the letter and leave it as is. What would you like to include in the letter, Clara? Hmm. Just, uh, just the word shenanigans <laughs> and an exclamation mark. Shenanigan. Actually, Nancy, that that's quite a good idea. Well, you guys do what you want to do. I feel leaving the scene as, with as little knowledge of our comings and goings is probably a wiser idea, but... I'd definitely say put the stone back or whatever and seal it back up. I mean, she's still not formally attached to us, so, you know. Mm. To have all possibilities. Yes, that's very true. We can use, we can throw her under the air, so-called wagon if needs be. Well, should we seal it back up and leave? Yes. Boys, get to work. Mm -hmm. you can easily put the paving stone back but I will say as you're turning around to leave your match plays over a statue of the virgin and you're not sure if it's a trick of the light but it looks like it's bleeding from the eyes yay <laughs> could I have a closer look mm-hmm it does look like the. It's like it looks like it's crying. But there's like tears of blood coming out of his eyes. Hmm. Is there any chance a stray dog could have got onto the balcony above it and have had a pee? No, because that would be yellow, not red. <laughs> 
Is that when you call them take, horses? No, it's dairy girls. I, I take it we're talking actual blood on this one. Apparently so. That's what it looks like in the in the match light. Can you all make me sanity rolls, please? I don't know what you've done there. Neither do I. I do that at work all the time. Do you want me to roll for you? Yeah. 15 versus 94 success. Nice. So... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Back to form. Just need a Roland now? Yeah. It's loading. So, everybody who passed, no sanity loss, you're fine. Um, Maya, take one point of sanity. One point of sanity loss. No. I think Maya was there for the discussion about crying statues. No, uh, Robin was, but... <laughs> so, somewhat shaken, um, you managed to leave by the same way you entered. And where do you go now? Before we go, could I use like a, a silk handkerchief or perhaps a cheaper handkerchief to just dab a little of the blood? Yeah. Or the sure. liquid that has come from the statue? Yes. Yes, you may. You, you know who would speak Italian and could translate this for us? Go on. Well, the, the concierge at the hotel. Mm. Well, that would be well, that's who we were showing it. Well, yes. I did think that maybe we should copy it out onto uh, just paper so it, it doesn't look like some ominous letter sealed with wax with a creepy, you know. And, you know, uh, perhaps, you know, maybe split it up, maybe add some of it, just so it doesn't, you know, we can say we found it or, you know, that someone's writing a play about creepy stuff and we just need this translated. We have been at the library previously, so it could be something that took our imagined fancy. Mm. Value it. Libraries are full of ideas. <laughs> yes, that's not a bad idea. Okay. So we're going to ask the concierge at the hotel, or indeed, you know, some other helpful uh, hotel person. Concierge sounds fine to me. Mm hmm. So, you can do that now. The concierge is still up, obviously, manning the desk. Mm. And, oh, uh, Senora Signorina, um, what can I do for you? Do you require anything for your rooms? We uh, came... Oh, God. Oh, uh, I'm assuming you speak Italian? Uh, and the concierge would just, like, look at you. Just like, are you for real? Is what you, you're <laughs> thinking, but. <laughs> is Senor Italian? Uh, could you translate this into English? And I will say, I, I took a moment to um, copy it on a, a piece of paper and just hand it over. Um, can I just ask, are you going to show him the seal as well? We'll see how the letter goes. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> and then we'll take it from there. He looks at it. Uh, give me a give me some a few moments, um, Senor. He looks at it, and presently he returns to you with a handwritten on hotel paper. Um, this handwritten note, and I think Clara, you can you can read this one. Uh, first of all, uh, first of all, I'll tip him. Mm -hmm. Good tip. <clears throat> God forgive me and God help me. I had great need of it, so I took it. 
with much trembling and sense of sacrilege, that I, a true Venetian, should violate our most sacred place? Yet surely some needs stand above all others. He was weeping and begging for help. His statue was broken and I had no material to repair it. For this cursed, cursed war makes everything scarce. I remembered the old story at last. What else could I do? His grandson died on Mont, Mont Grappa alongside my dear Marco. And his figures are the only things that comfort him. God forgive me. God trust that I only seek to do my best. Handwritten note. Yep, that's that's all of it. Uh, thank you very much, Concierge. Uh, si, Signore. Will there be anything else? Uh, yes. Could I get a cocktail, please? <laughs> si, Signore. El, El Presidente, please. <laughs> Maya kind of gives her uh, Clara a nudge and it's like, what about the seal? Oh, um, concierge. And what, what is your what is your name, concierge? I, it feels impolite to refer to you as concierge. My name is uh, Giacomo. Giacomo. Um, Giacomo. Giacomo. Uh, and um. This could you also do you recognize this and I will hold up the envelope with the seal on. Looks pretty fine. Signorina, every Venetian recognizes that seal. That is the seal of the Gramancy Dollmaker family. Ah. Important people? They are famous in the every child in the city has a one doll made by the Gramancy family. Doll, you say? Yeah, see, see, doll. They um, since the Great War, they've moved into uh, prost- um, family. They moved into prosthetics, um, arms, legs, and so on. Yeah, Venetian war veterans can get these limbs, extra limbs, for free. Oh, it's very, very charitable work. See, see. Um, I can, I can tell you their address if you're interested yourself. Uh. Yes, I need a new leg, yes. <laughs> Gonna say excellent, always nice to see new parts of the city. And we'll point out to you he will not say Sempredrito. Straight on. <laughs> um he will point out on the map location I've just marked as G R Gromancy's doll works. They open um eight AM eight and eight o'clock in the morning. It's a it's a family. Antonio he he lost his son in the Great War. Um, actually, his son was named Marco. I wonder if this is the same person in the note. Hmm. But well, um, possibility. Yeah. Now your your cocktail, Signorina. Ah, thank you very much. Tip him again. <laughs> and I think that as we come to the end of this rather busy day, rather full day. I think that's where we're going to call it to and close for this, for this session. Mm-hmm. As the 29th mm-hmm. comes to an end, and we move <coughs> to Tuesday the 30th, mm. Wednesday, to Tuesday the 30th of January. So, thank you all very much for playing with that. I hope, we were, I hope you enjoyed that. I enjoyed, There's some parts that I really enjoyed. I thought really worked well. Uh, we'll go down with Stars and Wishes. Let's start with Richard. Stars mm. and wishes. Um, I liked my being annoyed with, with my character, <laughs> um, which is nice. Um, I, even though my character is completely right, and you know they're just being mean. Um, of course they are. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I liked uh, being horrible <clears throat> to fascists. Uh, that's always good. Um. I'm hoping we can get into proper Indiana Jones stuff where we can punch some of them. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> but, um, and uh, wishes, um, well, aside from punching fascists, um, ooh, just to get Clara more in the team. 
<laughs> and for people to to discover more about mm. Cora's odd upbringing and exceptionally wealthy family families because they're both quite rich but you know one's british rich and one's american rich <clears throat> there's, there's very much a difference in that in the 20s mm. um well yeah just uh and you know i like i like uh seeing more venice in this setting yeah um go for go for christy next actually <laughs> Uh, it's this hopes and wishes sort of thing. Yes, yeah, stars and wishes. Um, stars and wishes, that's it. Uh, yeah, I quite like the fact that that I called out the crying statue because I was just talking about that in real life. <laughs> so it's something that I had. I have mm -hmm. like a Reader's Digest book which from the 80s, which me and my brother basically poured over, and it's in there. And it's like, oh yes, I know all about this. <laughs> it is actually in this book, the campaign because well, it actually calls out that one of the nights statues <laughs> do start weeping. <laughs> yeah. So I thought that's I know, quite. That's like, that good. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's that's a thing that can happen. <laughs> yeah, that's a thing that could can happen in real life. I was talking about not like thinking it would actually be in the. <laughs> Just a fun fact. Brilliant. Um, any wishes? Uh, not at the minute. I mean, it's quite nice going treasure hunting again. Mm. Ah, brilliant. Um, we'll go with Brian next, actually. Uh, stars. Uh, uh, like how we basically said that we wouldn't do anything to interfere with the marriage, <laughs> but uh, we didn't say anything for those who weren't present. Uh. I also liked the weeping statue that was suitably creepy. Uh, wishes. Um. Yeah, just ex doing some more exploring, getting into the creepy stuff. Um. Sarah. Um. I enjoyed going off and doing a little bit of exploring on my own. That was fun. I like Clara. I think Clara's going to be a lot of fun. Good addition to the party. Mm. Um, I wish I had taken the two opportunities where I could have made Hamilton references and I didn't. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, I just enjoyed it. I think there's a lot going on. It's all very good. A bit creepy stuff. It's all good. And Robin, finally. Um, so I want to say I'm absolutely loving Clara. Mm. I think mm. under different circumstances, certainly her and Maya will get on like a house on fire. No. Um, Not having it. They're going to be rivals. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's such a thing as a friendly rivalry as well, you know. <laughs> um, and Maya is going to be doing... well. I do hope that uh, Rossini comes to a sticky end, um, <laughs> and Maya's going to be doing all she can to interfere with his plans, and that may end up being that he uh, gets bludgeoned to death with a left leg. <laughs> Brilliant. That would be cool. Be good. Yeah. I think there's a few things for me. I like again. I like um, new character Clara. New characters are always are always great to be introduced. Um, I also liked um, Brian and Christy stepping up, Roland and Edward stepping up yes. in the police scene as well. I thought that was quite cool. Mm -hmm. That was very yes, good. That was well, really yeah. good. That was mm -hmm. really good as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just all clicked together. Uh, uh, Edward's basically an ex arm because of you know hitting a policeman, mm -hmm. and here he is seeing. Another suitably evil policeman, and he's just not having it. That's good. Um, wishes. I think we're actually going quite well with this, um, making good progress on the investigation, and um, we'll see what happens next time. So, with that, thank you all very much for watching. 
please, if you haven't done so, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll be able to see when all these games go live. Um, we have a Discord you can join. The link is in the description below. And we will see you next time. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.